Father in heaven, thank you so much for this far you brought us. For the privilege once again you granted us that we may learn from you as you break unto us the bread from the heavenly bakery to feed us that we may, Father, be full even to influence those within our spheres of influence, God. We want to thank you and plead that you will speak to our hearts individually, convicting us of sin, judgment, and equally righteousness, God. Till the end of it, Lord, may your Holy Spirit contain our minds, never to wander from this thought is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are. First time viewers, welcome all, welcome all to Baruch Servant. We are soul winning through aggressive, effective evangelism is our main agenda, especially as we see that the coming of our Lord is so nigh, sooner than we will think of it. And that's why I will not stop reminding us daily, anytime we have this discourse of the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and verse 17. And this is what the Bible says that for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe to the Jewish first and also to the Greek for therein verse 17 is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written that the just shall live by faith it is by faith that the just shall surely live and this faith does not just come faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God that's why the Lord wants to teach us how I invite us that we may take our Bibles we may take our notebooks and write these verses and confirm even after this discourse now I want to bring to our attention this book that I love so much the phrase from Christ object lesson uh, the page is 69 paragraph is one listen to what inspiration says Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church when the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people then he will come to claim them as his own it is the privilege of every Christian not only to look for but to hasten the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Second Peter 3 verse 12. Were all who profess his name bearing fruit to his glory, how quickly the whole world would be sown with the seed of the gospel. Quickly the last great harvest will be ripened and Christ will come to gather the precious grains. So what Christ is waiting for is that his character may be perfectly reproduced among his people, that he may find the audacity, that he may find the privilege to come and take us as his own. Wonderful. Our discourse today is ashamed of the gospel, ashamed of the gospel. And now, listen to what the psalmist tells us in the book of Psalm 119, verse 9. In verse 11, the psalmist says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Verse 11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. And if you consider Christ talking to the Pharisees and to the Jews when he was in the world in John chapter 5, and verse 39, the Bible says this, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which speak or testify of me. And so Christ tells and reminds them that inasmuch as they search the scriptures, they need to know that all scriptures testifies of him. And so he calls them to the understanding of the word of God. Because having known that it is about Jesus, the same Jesus they have known and are calling to attention, they don't want to be referred or to be attached to him because they are ashamed of the gospel. And Paul, while he writes the Philippians, let's go to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12 down to verse 16 is telling us, Wherefore, 
my beloved as ye have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out thine own your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is god which worketh in you both to win and to do of his good pleasure do all things verse 14 without murmurings and disputings mm. that ye may be blameless and harmless the sons of god without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world holding for holding forth the word of life that i may rejoice in the day of christ that i have not run in vain neither labored in vain and if you consider the word of god in the book of first corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58 therefore my beloved the scripture says therefore my beloved be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the lord for as much as ye know that your labor in the lord shall not be or shall never be in vain so the inspiration tells us through the word of god that he is running paul is saying that he is running the good race that he's to ensure that his work in the lord is never in vain that means that we could be laboring but our labors could be in vain especially when we are ashamed of the gospel of christ and that is why he's calling us to the same book philippians chapter 2 now from verse verse 21 the bible says that for all seek their own not the things which are are jesus christ's Everybody in the world today and in the church of God are just seeking their own. No one is willing to seek that which is to the glorification of the Lord. And if people are told the will of God, they therefore desire to murmur because the word of God is so straight, the truth is so sure that it, it is rebuking the evil that humanity is undertaking. For the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is piercing, dividing asunder even to the bone marrow. And it is discerning what is happening, the intentions of, 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 of humanity. And that is why when truth is presented from the altars, truth is presented from wherever it is desired of, most of the people do not embrace it because it is a constant rebuke. It is rebuking the lifestyle that people are living. They have. And that is why Paul is reminding us in the same book from verse 5 to verse 11. Listen to this. Let's travel to uh, Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to verse 11. And this is what the Bible is saying. That let this mind be in you which also was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but he but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men mm. and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross obedient he was obedient unto death he humbled himself today humility is lacking among the people of god pride arrogance and a lack of integrity especially conviction from the word of god is lacking among the faithfuls those who call themselves the people of god especially among the remnants themselves and we consider this it says in verse 9 wherefore god also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and the things on earth and the things under the earth verse 11 and that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord but we now see that many tongues marry in philosophy they upgrade evolutional theories which are not salvational the bible is very clear in the book of colossians chapter 2 
the Lord has got something to tell us. Let's open our Bibles, the book of Colossians chapter 2. And verse 8, the Bible says that, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. People want to be told things which lull and benumbs their senses when they should be revived and awakened that they may walk patiently and humbly before the Lord, looking to that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ, who did not even think of anything but gave his life that we may be one to Jesus Christ. Remember, we are talking about ashamed of the gospel. Now, I want to bring your attention, sons and daughters of God, beloved viewer, from wherever you are viewing this, to this book called 3MR or 3 manus Manuscript Release, which the page is 70, paragraph is 4. This is what the Spirit of God is teaching us, telling us this day as we share from this inspiration. Listen to this is what is happening. That the fashion of this age is not to be our standard. Christ in his day had a work to do in breaking the bonds that bound the people to the world. So it has been in every age. Listen to this. Satan makes yokes and the people take them on. These yokes are heavy because they are not in the conformity with the requirements of God. And these ten holy precepts. But it is our duty to obey God and wear the yoke prepared by God. Obedience is always better than sacrifice. In chapter, the same book, page 71, paragraph 1 says this, manuscript release the third one. We have an enemy, listen, a willy foe who presents to us that, he, that the yoke of Christ is galling. He will represent that we shall have to give up everything that would afford us pleasure that in obeying God we must yield upon our own will and submit to arbitrary laws. It reminds us that it is too much to be obedient to the will of God. Satan is directly opposed to the transforming work that would fit us to be the children of God and to be partakers of his blessing. It is our duty to love God with all our heart and soul and spirit in return for what he has done for us. Beloved viewers, it continues by saying this, it is our privilege to leave out the principles laid down in the word of God. Should we do so and carry out the teachings of our, in our families, there would be a different order of things than we now see. If we would be doing this in our families, there would be a different order of things that we now see. But listen, because people are ashamed of the gospel of Christ, even erecting altars of God in our families, is unheard of. People have erected the altars that belong to the devil. Television has been appraised. Social media has been appraised. Instead of having devotions, instead of having Bible discourses, people marry in watching things which cannot save them. They are ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Oh my. The same book, paragraph 2 says this, page 71. Great responsibility rests upon every parent. They have a duty to educate their children and to bring them up in the fear of God. The children need transforming and this will involve a constant work on the part of the parents. The children must be taught to respect and revere and revere God and this will take a constant effort. Should this be done, we should see more tenderness of the heart combined with all that other Christian graces manifested in the children that have been given us. These graces must be instilled in our children that they may be enabled to resist the evil tendencies of this age. Abraham was faithful in educating his children and in this he pleased God. Hmm. He pleased God. Listen as it continues, paragraph 3. This duty cannot be performed in our own strength, but our help is in Christ. And we hear the invitation 
come unto me. Now the condition is to come and submit to the condition laid down in his word. We are not to contend for our own ways, but to conform to the will of God. Conform to the will of God. We are here as pro probationers to perfect character for eternal life. We must realize the merits of Jesus and seek to be like him, for he is our perfect pattern. Would you say amen? That we must seek to be like Jesus, for he is our own pattern. And he has promised in the same Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 that for I am I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me or which strengthens me. So we can achieve all this by cooperating with Jesus Christ. Because we are ashamed of the gospel, we fear even having communion. We fear as parents to teach our children to have the fear of God, to know how to conduct themselves even in the house of God and to know that they are holy hours that belongs to God. That when time is due for devotions, everybody must assemble at the table the altar of Christ in every family that they may invite the presence of the Holy Spirit that they may invite the holy angels to be there in ever present guest to cooperate with them and to lead them in the fear of God listen to this page 72 paragraph 1 it is the privilege of parents to instill in their children the principles of Christ and while that's doing they while that's doing they themselves are learning lessons that will fit them for heaven these lessons will assist us to wear the yoke of Christ we shall find it perfectly easy and thus we may find an open door to heaven and a light will emanate and shine upon our path pathway Thus, every mother can receive help to help to faithfully discharge her duty to her children. Oh, mothers, beloved daughters of God, there is a solemn responsibility that has been given to you to impart these doctrines to your children, to teach them the will of God, to help them know Jesus. Instead of being glued in television, watching soap operas, or watching Afro cinemas, it is your duty of the highest nob nobility to teach your children the fear of the Lord and how to walk with God. Listen to this. Manuscript release, page 87, the paragraph is this, says this. But as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of Christ. As men resist the Spirit of God, his Spirit will be less and less manifested in the earth. It will be a fearful time when the angels fold their wings and seize their watch care over those who have resisted the Spirit of God. It will then be too late for wrongs to be righted. There will be no more prayers to prevail in their behalf in the behalf of the rejectors of light. The cities around us are filled with wickedness. Mm. And after the message of warning has been given unto them, no more words of peace will be given. Christ is coming. And God will laugh when their fear cometh. But while probation continues, Christ is ever willing to help us to resist evil. But oh, the iniquity that is in the world. It is high time we put on the whole armor lest we drift down the current and be swallowed up with the besom of destruction. A record is kept of how we treat the Spirit of God. Our characters are recorded in the books of heaven are as, as are our faces on the photo, photo plates here. So our character photos are in heaven and by these records we shall be judged. May God help each one of us to do his whole duty and get ready for what is before us is my prayer. Beloved sons and daughters of God, what a solemn warning, what a solemn encouragement that we need not to slumber. You see, when all this is happening, some of us are taking care of fashion. Fashion has become the God of many people. Laziness has become the God of many people. Many don't want the truth because the truth will make them to sacrifice many things in life. You will sacrifice your best diet because you need to be a health reformer. You will sacrifice dressing like the worldlings because you need to dress with the right apparel, the character of Christ. 
you will stop singing wrong music because the word of God teaches that you should be sing, able to sing with understanding. And so the truth is making us to deny many things appealing to our, our, our flesh and to our nature and comfort. Because of that, you will be able also to wake up as early daily every Sabbath to be in time in the church of God so that you may be in sync with the will of God and get every word spoken from the holy place. And so the truth will deny you comfort, to deny you pleasure. So many have neglected the faith. They have been ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Beloved viewer, are you ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Remember, it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. They just shall live by faith. The word of God bears the righteousness of God as it is revealed from faith to faith. Oh, listen to this. As you are ashamed of the gospel, there are some who contended for the faith of Jesus Christ. Listen to what is happening. In the book, Great Controversy, page 240, paragraph is 2, the inspiration says this. The rage of the persecutors was equaled by the faith of the, of the martyrs. Not only men but delicate women and young maidens displayed unflinching courage. Wives would take their stand by their husband's stake. And while he was enduring the fire, in other words, they were being burnt, they would whisper words of solace or sing psalms to cheer him. Young maidens who lie down in their living graves as if they were entering into the, their chamber of nightly sleep or go forth to the scaffold under the fire dressed in their best apparel as if they were going to their marriage. In other, imagine some people desired to lose even their life to go into the fairy furnace because they were not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. They knew that it was the power of God that was able to save them. But some of us are nowadays heard carelessly saying, it is too much for us to do the reform. It is too much for us to stop this and that. It is too much. Te teach us about Jesus. I wonder which kind of Jesus we can teach without reformation because he's the author of all reformation. Remember, he wants to take us back to Eden before the fall of humanity. Listen to this. I love what is happening to the faithful sentinels of God. This is what the Bible says, book of Psalm 34, from verse 6 to verse 8. The Bible says this, that this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Verse 8, O test and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. As some denounce the will of God and do their own pleasures, some are trusting in the Lord and they are blessed. Why? Because the angel of the Lord will ever encamp around about them that fear him and he will deliver them from all their troubles. Some people are contending for faith, while some are indolent and very lazy in their discourses. And that is why the book of Hebrews tells me something. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 4. If you begin especially from verse 2, the Bible says that looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of God of the throne of God, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. Verse 4, for ye, ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. We must not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We must strive with sin to overcome it, to gain victory over sin and iniquity. Why are you ashamed of the gospel of Christ? I see many people run after politicians. They are even ready to die for politicians. But when it comes to Jesus Christ, they cannot die for the Savior. While some chose to die for the Savior, even going through fiery furnace for the sake of the truth. Remember people like John Huss, people like Jerome, they were burnt and they said standingly and saying, promised by saying that with our own blood we shall water the seed of the gospel.
And when they went through the fires, they were burned. They were burned singing joyous songs and hymns because they knew that the gospel of Christ is powerful to save. While some of us today are ashamed of the gospel, they are ashamed even carrying the Bible, seen going to church carrying the Bible. They don't want to be attacked by that word Christianity. It is seen as a religion for those who are suffering, a religion of the poor. Remember, even Christ suffered reproach and that shame he gladly bore that you and I may be saved. Why are you ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Oh, beloved, I'm challenging us this day that we may not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Listen to this powerful inspiration from the book of Testimony for the Church, volume 5. The page is 221, paragraph is 2. Testimony for the Church, volume 5. The page is 221, paragraph is 2. The inspiration says this. How shall we know for our, ourselves God's, God's goodness and his love? The psalmist tells us not. Hear and know, read and know, or believe and know. But he tells us to taste and see that the Lord is good. Instead of relying upon the word of another, taste for yourself and see that the Lord indeed is good. He continues by saying in paragraph 3, experience is knowledge derived from experiment. Experimental religion is what is needed now. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Some, yes, a large number have a theoretical knowledge of religious truth but have never felt the renewing power of divine grace upon their own hearts. These persons are ever slow to heed the testimonies of warning, reproof, and instruction indicted by the Holy Spirit. They believe in the wrath of God, but put forth no earnest effort to escape it. They believe in heaven, but make no sacrifice to obtain it. They believe in the value of the soul, and that ere long its redemption ceaseth forever. Yet they neglect the most precious opportunities to make their peace with God. Listen to what he says in, verse, in, in paragraph 4. They may read the Bible, but its threatenings do not alarm, or its promises with, 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 win them. They approve things that are excellent, yet they follow the way in which God has forbidden them to go. They know a refuge, but do not avail themselves of it. They know a remedy for sin, but do not use it. They know the right, but have no relish for it. All their knowledge will but increase their condemnation. So sad. They have never tested and learned by experience that the Lord is good. Imagine they have all this knowledge, but they are doing no effort. They are not working out their salvation with fear and trembling. They have not that is God which worketh in them, both to will and to do of his every good pleasure. They have forgotten that they can do all things through Christ which strengthens them. Are you one of them? Am I one of them? Am I ready to meet Christ? Am I ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Are you ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Beloved sons and daughters of God, we are living in a borrowed time. There is no my time to lose and to trifle with our salvation. It might be too late for salvation. When still, there is still time, the time still lingers, we need to take it and walk therein, that God may work in us both to will and to do of his every good pleasure. I love this book. It still continues by saying, page 222, paragraph is 1, Testimony for the Church, volume 5. To become a disciple of Christ is to deny self and follow Jesus through evil as well as good report. Few are doing this now. Many prophesy falsely and the people love to have it so. But what will be done in the end thereof? What will be the decision when their work with all its results shall be brought in, the review, in review before God? That's a solemn question. The Christian life is a warfare. The Apostle Paul speaks in wrestling against principalities and powers as he fought the good fight of faith. Again he declares, Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Oh no! 
Today, sin is cherished and excused. The sharp sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, does not cut to the soul. Has religion changed? Has Satan's enmity to God abated? A religious life once presented difficulties and demanded self-denial. All is made very easy now. And why is this? The professed people of God have compromised with the power of darkness. The reason why all this happened is because the people of God who need to be there for the cause of God have compromised. And when you speak glad tidings from the, from the, from, from the gatherings of people of God, you will be termed as you are too much. Why do you always look at people's evils and iniquities? You see, we cannot discern iniquity and just marry at it and call people that, oh, you have sinned so well, you are a good sinner. God will frown at us. We are called to be watchmen, to give a trumpet a certain sound, to warn the people of God that time is no more. Revival is needed. Reformation is required among God's people. We need not to lose any minute. There must be a revival of the straight testimony. Page 222, paragraph is 3. The path to heaven is no smoother now than in the days of our Savior. All our sins must be put away. Every darling indulgence that hinders our religious life must be cut off. The right eye or the right hand must be sacrificed if it causes us to offend. Are we willing to renounce our own wisdom and to receive the kingdom of heaven as a little child? Are we willing to part with self-righteousness? Are we willing to give up our chosen worldly associates? Are we willing to sacrifice the approbation of men? The prize of eternal life is of infinite value. Will we put forth efforts to and make sacrifices proportionate to the worth of the object to be attained? Listen to paragraph 4. Every association we form, however limited, exerts some influence upon us. The extent to which we yield to that influence will be determined by the degree of intimacy, the constancy of the intercourse, and our love and veneration for the one with whom we associate. Thus, by acquaintance and association with Christ, we may become like him, the one faultless example. I desire to be like Christ. I know it is not easy, but we can do all things through Christ we strengthen it us. There is hope for us. Before it is too late for salvation, there is hope for us. And that is why Paul is telling us something in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, the verse 4 to verse 5. This is what the inspiration says. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We need to obey Christ. When it calls for us to make a, day, a, a choice, we would rather choose Jesus than choosing the world. We rather take time to be holy and walk with the Lord. It is almost time for the Lord to come. I hear many people say, the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. It is high time that we should give ourselves the admonitions of Jesus Christ. Because that time will come when it will be too late for salvation. Too late for you to be saved. Because all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. So that's why we study the word of God. Because it is able to teach us, able to correct us. Because he says in that same book, 2 Timothy 3, 6, 15, that, that since thou was a child, thou hast known the scriptures which are able to make you wise unto salvation. The desire of God is that all may be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For he, Jesus Christ, is the truth. The book is Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3. The Bible says this, that 
how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that had him how shall we escape if we are ashamed of the gospel of Christ which is able to save us which is able to correct us which is able to reprove us which able, is able to instruct us into righteousness how shall we escape paul is still telling us this day the book second corinthians chapter 6 verse 1 and verse 2 the bible says this we then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of god in vain beloved sons and daughters of god never receive the grace of christ in vain to be ashamed of the gospel of christ he took the life of christ to die on the cross that you and i will be saved why are we ashamed of the gospel of christ listen to what he says in verse 2 for he said i have had thee in all time accepted and in all day of salvation have i succored thee behold now is the accepted time behold now is the day of salvation will you accept christ to save you it is almost time for the waiting church the remnant to cast away our pride with the garden loins and the burning lambs to be ready for the coming of the Lord to look for that great day of the Lord yet the church of God the people of God have left aside watching people are ashamed of the gospel of Christ and how sad shall it be it must be the breaking of the day when the Lord comes will you find will he find you ready Will he find me ready prepared to meet him before it is too late for salvation? As we bring this to a close, Isaiah 55, Isaiah 55 and verse, beginning verse 6, the Bible says, the Bible says this, Seek ye the Lord, while he may be found. Call ye upon him, while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. The Lord is waiting us to go to him to seek for him while he may, be still, he may still be found to seek for him while he is still near and to call upon him that all those who are sinners including myself that we should repent and get back to the Lord because he's merciful to save and he's saying that beloved we may approach his throne boldly that we may obtain mercy and grace to help us in the time of need the times we are living in are very evil and weary we need to sacrifice all and give ourselves to Jesus Christ holy that he may be able to work in us both to will and to daily of his every good pleasure it is my prayer that you will accept Jesus Christ today that you will give yourself to Jesus Christ because nobody knows of tomorrow it might be my last time preaching the gospel it may be your last time hearing these testimonies oh how it will be peaceful to know that we have rested in the Lord may the Lord convict you through his spirit of righteousness of sin and even judgment that you may desire to walk with him let's pray as we bring this to an end father in heaven once again we thank you for reminding us that we should not be ashamed of the gospel of christ it is the power of god unto salvation to, that is able to save us to the uttermost i plead for your redemption your revival in your church among in our hearts god among your people lord that we may not be ashamed of the gospel of god that we may take up the mantle and go out for aggressive effective evangelism for soul winning that is the only thing that we now remaining with lord we cannot go in our might and our power we plead for the outpouring of the holy spirit that father we may find strength to be witnesses from jerusalem to judea to samaria and to the other uttermost part of the world have mercy on us god Thank you for not consuming us, Lord. Thank you for not dealing with us according to the multitude of our sins, God. But in your grace and mercies, you have spared our lives, O oh Lord. Help us never to take your grace in vain. 
but to accept it to work a revival and reformation in our lives. Preserve us and prepare us for your soon and return is our sincere and humble prayer in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen.